Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. And tonight I want to go over a video that I made uh, just a few days ago. I uh, went live Tuesday, two days ago actually, because I, I typically like to release a video every Tuesday and I like to do a uh, live stream tonight, Thursday. So I hope everybody's doing all right tonight. But tonight I want to go over heat treatment, so I want to get right into it. So let's see if I can share my screen. So this is the video that I went over that I did the other day. So it's bed bug heat treatment alternatives guaranteed to work. Save money on expensive heat treatments. So I get a lot of comments when I do videos like this. And typically, a lot of the newer ones have been pretty hostile. So I, I like to, I, I usually delete those comments because they're a little vulgar. And I don't think that that's very uh, professional to have that on your YouTube channel. So I don't allow that type of, type of behavior. But tonight, I want to go over a certain person and, and some of the comments that I get pretty frequently whenever I do a heat treatment video. So one of the number one things I get uh, hollered at me is that because the heat treatment machines are so expensive uh, that I just can't afford them and that's why I don't do heat treatments because if I could afford a heat treatment machine oh I definitely would be able to do it um, that I would do it and I, there's no other option but a heat treatment so that's uh, actually I don't know why I have to get on YouTube and discuss my financial situation but I can afford a heat treatment machine uh, I can't afford bad reputation. So the problem is, is that I go behind a lot of people uh, who do heat treatments and I have to repair their job, meaning I have to kill the bed bugs that they should have killed in the first place because they didn't do their job. Uh, the heat treatment did not do the job. So let me explain to you on a business standpoint why you don't do a heat treatment. So I'll get into the, the, uh, the whole legality and everything. Just the, if you do a heat treatment for someone and you're providing them a heat treatment uh, to kill their bed bugs, uh, you have to heat up the room to at least 130 degrees. Why is this? Because the uh, bed bugs die at 118 plus degrees and the eggs die at 125 plus degrees. So, and this is Fahrenheit because I'm stupid. I don't know, you know, Celsius. But, <laughs> um, so when you heat up a house to 130 degrees, you've got to realize that heat rises, and so the heat near the, the ceiling is going to obviously be hotter than the heat down near the floor. So in order to get the heat near the floor, which around your baseboards and the places that the bed bugs like to hide, the heat has to be up to typically about 145, 150, uh, sometimes as much as 180 degrees, just in order to make sure that the, the floor at the bottom maintains that constant 130 degree that you need to kill eggs. And that's for at least four to eight hours that it has to be that hot. Um, so uh, business standpoint, you have to, the reason that heat treatments are so expensive, this is one of the questions I get a lot too, is why are they so expensive uh, when, a, when a chemical treatment is so inexpensive? You know, when you compare a chemical treatment to a heat treatment, it could be a sixth if an eighth of a price. They're a lot cheaper to do because you're not having to spend all day. So if I if I come out to do a heat treatment on your house, I have to heat, for one, I have the, the financial burden of the machinery itself that I have to, I have to maintain, I have to keep in top running condition, and uh, I have to purchase in the first place. It is expensive. But you, once you purchase it, it pretty much pays for itself after a couple of heat treatments. It's all you really need to do to pay for some of these machines. Um, I've seen them as, as low as ten to $15,000, but um, a lot of them are up to you know fifty to $100,000 for some of the really top-end, really good heat machines. And the problem is, is that you have to be there all day. So if it takes um, you know, five to eight hours to kill the bed bugs, then you have to be there for five to eight hours as a technician somebody has to sit there all day and twiddle their thumbs and wait until uh, and constantly go in and check with the heat gun and everything and make sure everything is still staying to temperature adjust fans move stuff around and so you're spending your entire day doing a heat treatment now uh, i can do five six bed bug jobs in one day and make more money than one heat treatment and so that's why you have to charge a fortune for a heat treatment because you got to figure you've got to pay a technician to sit there all day long and run a machine 
but the the and and that's only if you're going to kill all the bed bugs. So so let's say you you uh, you turn the heat off, so you're done. You, you don't see any live bed bugs in the room. All the bed bugs are dead, or so you think. You turn the heat off. You walk out, pack up everything, and you leave. And now the 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 room gets back to temperature, back to living temperature, maybe in the 70s or 74 or 73. I don't know what you keep the thermostat at. But now it's livable again. So you go back in your house, and in a day or two, you start getting bit by bed bugs that the exterminator swore up and down that this was going to eliminate them. He was going to get the house boiling hot like an oven, and it was going to kill your bed bugs. Um, the thing that, that a lot of these guys don't really have any argument for is that there, that there is no argument. There's absolutely no argument for is that... Um, what about the residual pesticides? You know, you, you have no residual. If you're doing a heat treatment only, you're having no residual pesticide. Any bed bugs that are hiding in the wall, around your baseboards, uh, anyone who's moved into a, a brand new house, at least a new house to you, or a new apartment, you go in, you look at the apartment, you're like, man, I really would like to live here. I think I'll go ahead and sign my lease. And you don't see bed bugs. You wouldn't sign the lease if you saw bed bugs. But as soon as you move your furniture in, the bed bugs are there. So where were the bed bugs hiding? They were hiding in the walls because bed bugs are a lot like cockroaches. They hide in the wall. One of the number one places that cockroaches live is inside your wall voids. They go in around your light sockets and your light switches and your plugs and stuff in the walls and they go in the wall and they live in the wall. It's a very common thing in houses, not only uh, apartments, but also single family homes. The bed bugs live in the wall. And the wall is insulated. So if the wall is insulated, the insulation is going to create cold pockets that you cannot possibly heat up to temperature like they say. Now you can hold a heat gun to a piece of sheetrock and the sheetrock may, may read 130 to 145 degrees and that sheetrock is really hot. But the insulation inside the sheetrock is not hot. It's designed to keep cool air pockets. That's what insulation does. So, um... This is why, this is the practicality behind why I don't uh, stand behind heat treatments, why I don't perform heat treatments. I'm not saying heat treatments don't work uh, sometimes. I believe they do work sometimes. I believe it is possible to get lucky and kill bed bugs with a heat treatment. Um, but I just don't think it's as effective as they like to say. But what they will do when they sell you a heat treatment is they like to come in and say, well, we'll give you a 90-day guarantee, or we'll give you a 60-day guarantee, or we'll give you a year guarantee. And I go over this in my video, is that a lot of times you don't even realize you have bed bugs again for three to six months anyway, because that's how long it takes bed bugs to breed to the point where you're really starting to notice them. Um, a nymph takes, uh, from the time it's in an egg, so the egg is laid, it takes six to ten days for the egg to hatch, and that's under perfect conditions, six to ten days for the egg to hatch. They can go longer, but the general is six to ten days. Uh, they hatch, they come out. Uh, they don't feed right away. They wait six to ten days to feed, and then they uh, they bite you again, uh, or they bite you for the first time. And so that's already three weeks into the future. Uh, at 21 days, you know you may get bit. That's uh, you may get bit once, and that's it. You may not even notice the bite. And so you they can go unnoticed for a while after a heat treatment is done, because you do kill off the majority. You kill off everything that's actually in the apartment. Um, if it's done right. Now, I have actually done apartments before where I've gone in and the heat treatment was done and they had uh, mattresses and box springs and stuff laid in there and the bed bugs were still alive inside the box spring. So, uh, obviously, the heat treatment was not done correctly or the uh, the bed bugs would have been dead in the box spring. Hey, Dee Dee, how are you? I see you every... I think you're here every time I do a live stream now. But uh, I try to get here late so you can be here. <laughs> If there's anybody here that, that uh, objects to me coming on after the kids go to bed and you don't see them bouncing around and screaming and hollering up behind me and Charlie climbing up over the chair and stuff like he likes to do. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you have any questions tonight, feel free to ask me too. I, I do pay attention to the chat. If anything comes in, I, I will absolutely answer except my top chat's on. Not my, I won't... Uh, all of my chat to show. There we go. It wasn't set right. Um, hey, cat. 
But uh, so anyway, if there are any questions about heat treatments, feel free to ask me if you have any questions about the things that I do on the chemical treatment. I have no, no problem in, in explaining what I do and how I do it. Uh, or if you have any other questions about roaches or fleas or you know, termites or anything like that, I'm here for that too. Anything, any kind of question that you have, I'm, I'm here to answer any question you have. Uh, it's not just about heat. I'm just trying to keep things. I wanted to go over this because I was thinking about it today and why I don't do heat treatments, one of the reasons I don't do them. Um, uh, Kat says, so then if I can take so long to recognize how, then how come most say a month without bites means you're free? Yeah, because that's just this general consensus. So in most of the time, if you go a month without bites, you typically are bed bug free. And the reason that is, is because bed bugs usually do bite you at least once in a month. At least once within 30 days you get bit. Whether it's by a nymph, whether it's by an adult, they're not going to say no to a free meal that's laying there right in the bed. And it doesn't typically take a month for eggs to hatch. It does happen. So in insects, there are genetic anomalies. It's, it occurs in roaches, it occurs in fleas, it occurs in, in bed bugs, where you'll have a bed bug egg that necessarily won't hatch out right away within the six to 10 day limit. Sometimes they may take a month, sometimes they may take two or three months to hatch. Um, that's not normal. It's, it's, you know, there's always the one that has to break the rule. You know, like when you're taking grammar in school, there's always that one word that's spelt weird, like weird, but uh, like I before E. <laughs> but um, there's always one that does break up the rule. So, uh, but that's not typical. You know, in the last year, I've done, uh, I think I've done maybe one, maybe two follow-ups uh, in a, after a first-time treatment. I usually never have to go back to do a second treatment at all doing the crossfire treatment, the stuff that I show you on my channel, the things that I do where I go in, I flip the beds and the mattresses and stuff. But um, I want a bed bug costume, uh, Eric. I, I would love to get a bed bug costume, but I have looked at them and they don't look real enough for me. But I would get it just to wear it in some of my videos. I would wear one. I, I, I actually, uh, I have a video I want to do here, just like joking around video, but I hadn't made it what I have not made a video yet. But, um, but yeah, I, I definitely would do that. So, but yeah, so um, typically a month is is adequate, Cat. And 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 usually when people call me, um, now I, I don't guarantee. So so one of the things about bed bug treatments, and this is something that a lot of people just, I mean, I'm pretty cheap compared to the competitors. Um, with pricing, and I, I try to I try to be inexpensive for most people because of um, I just want I just want people to be able to afford pest control. But the thing about bed bugs and the reason you can't guarantee a bed bug treatment is because people bring them in from other places. So one of the problems with treating your home for bed bugs, and this is one of the things that I do, and I'll admit here right on channel right in front of everybody, I treat people's automobiles. So. Uh, Typically, what you what you do is you treat the automobile, and that way they can't transport them around. Because if you're going in and you're uh, you're getting a treatment, and then they're not treating your car, and maybe you're bringing the bed bugs from your aunt, or maybe you're picking your bed bugs up from your uncle's house, or maybe you're getting them from uh, your brother or sister's house, or maybe you're getting them from your grandparents' house, or or maybe someone's getting them from school, like maybe you're doing a, a pickup. A lot of people are doing pickup now. They don't want their kids riding the bus because of COVID and stuff. And so they'll go and they'll pick the kids up at the bus stop, you know, or they'll pick them up at school. If the kids are bringing the bed bugs home from school, they may be throwing their backpack in the trunk. So you want to make sure you treat your car so you don't transport them around in your vehicle. Um, and so it's, it's nothing wrong with treating the vehicle. You can treat a vehicle. And it's one way that you can kind of try to trace where you found them. A lot of people just don't know where they had bed bugs from. But if you've got adults and you've got, you know, more than five or six adults, usually I tell people to count back 60 to 90 days. Um, and usually you can figure out where you brought them from. If you haven't traveled anywhere, go back as much as six months because, you know, they, they are slow to reproduce. And so usually you can track it back and figure out exactly where you were or who came in your house that brought them into your house. I, I have a video, Cat. I do have a video of where to treat in the car. I do have one. I can't remember which one it is. It's in there somewhere. If Chaos, if you know what video that is, I would appreciate it if you would link it. I, I'll allow it. I, I don't allow links just to flash in my chat because um, I just don't like it. It's a lot of spam. 
But if you link it to me, I would appreciate it because I will uh, I will absolutely share that link to to Cat. But yeah, I do have one of the of the car. My car looks horrible though because I hardly ever vacuum the floor and I live in my car because I work in my car all the time. Um, let's see. I'm just talking, not paying attention. Um, I had heat treatment and I'm just looking around my house, anxious. They didn't put down a residual waiting for cross. See, that's one of the problems why. That's another thing about heat treatments, and this is so. So my very first video I ever did was why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs. And since that video went live uh, four years ago, over four years ago, um, I get a lot of uh, a lot of people comment and they say, "Well, that's because they uh, the reason the reason that people." It's because they're not doing a chemical treatment. The reason the heat treatment's not working is because they're not doing a chemical residual after the heat treatment. And that's one of the number one arguments I get now. But that's not the way it was four years ago. It was just like you explained, just like that. They just did heat, that's all they did. And they didn't come back with a BNG and treat the baseboards or anything. They just did a heat treatment. And so that's the point. When you turn the heat off, there's no residual pesticide at all to kill the bed bugs that are living in the walls. And they absolutely do live in the walls. Like I said, if you move into an apartment, and you don't see any bed bugs in the apartment, and you move in, where did they come from? They came from the walls because that's where they were living. And the same with a house, the same with a uh, you know, condo, townhome, anything. They live in the walls. This is the residuals that live behind in the walls. And not only that, but if there's not a host, bed bugs can, can uh, lay dormant. So they go through kind of like a hibernative state, like a bear. Or, you know, if there's no food nearby, they can actually sleep and wait until food arrives for up to 18 months. So they don't need to feed right away. A lot of landlords will evict their tenants and they won't rent out the apartment for two or three months thinking that they'll starve the bed bugs out and they'll kill them naturally that way. But that doesn't work. 18 months is a long time for a landlord to let a property sit empty or sit, yeah, without making any, any kind of uh, money off of it. Um, I haven't had any in about three years and still look around my house anxious. Uh, that's, yes, Chaos. Um, chaos, if you're on the Discord, I could post a link to my Discord. That's probably the best way to get it. Or you could just post it in chat. If it doesn't work, I will see it if it posts in chat. Everyone else may not see it, but I will see it and I can post it. Um, let's see. From bed bugs to what I think might be pigeon mites in less than a month. So yeah, if you don't see bites, so that's one of the reasons a lot of people think they might have pigeon mites or bird mites is because a lot of people get bites and if the bite is gone within 24 hours and you don't notice a, uh, a mark or anything on your body and you're just itchy but you can feel the bites, a lot of times that's pigeon mites or bird mites doing that. And uh, you can't see them, but they also can't live without a bird. But the problem is pigeon mites can live up to a year without a pigeon, and they can bite you that entire year. And so a lot of times it's not actually bed bugs uh, at all. It's actually pigeon mites. And so you look around your house if you have any kind of birds or chickens. Uh, if you have chickens, chicken mites, they're a type of bird mite as well. They can live up to six to nine months without a blood meal. And so that's a possibility. Um, I'm trying to look for a link. Let's see. It's not on there. Oh well. So let's see what else is said here. Um, so phone conversation. Let's go ahead and turn that picture off there. Now that we moved off of that subject about heat treatment. So if there's any questions about heat treatment, don't hesitate to ask. I think I got everything said, what needed to be said. I've said it so many times on my videos. I'm sure that you guys know already that why I don't do heat treatments. But I hate to beat a dead horse. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Um, man, you guys have chatted a lot tonight. I'm trying to read up, trying to figure out what everybody has said. Uh, Steve, the link should be below. I don't understand why the, the links aren't showing up on my videos. They're supposed to show up in the description, 
but they don't show up in the description at all. Um, and I don't know why that is. This new setup I've got is not working the way it's supposed to. Um, let me see if I can link it to you, Steve. I have to get the link myself because I, I always have to look it up. I can never remember everything. There you go, Steve. Um, Gregory says, how does overspraying hurt your chances of defeating bed bugs? I think my exterminator may have soaked things. I mean, it depends on what he used, Greg. The, the thing is, is um, it says right on the label not to overspray. On I know Crossfire, you don't have to use that much. I could do four or five houses with just one gallon. It doesn't take that much to do a job. The main thing is putting it where it needs to go. That's the most important thing, is making sure the chemical goes where the chemical is supposed to go. Just spraying everything is not really doing a job. You need to make sure you get it into the cracks and the crevices. It's not about the surface area. It's about where the bed bugs live. And bed bugs don't live out in the open. They live inside the cracks. And so if you can get the chemical into the cracks where the bed bugs live, they can't live there anymore. If they do, they'll die. So that's the thing about pest control. And that's not just with bed bugs. That's with roaches, with spiders, uh, cockroaches, crickets, silverfish, um, you know, millipedes, centipedes. Any, all, most of your bugs are going to live over in the cracks in the places that they hide away. And that's why you always hear about them, you know, coming out at night. Bugs always come out at night because they feel safe and they're out in the open and they're not scared. And so, but uh, they like, they hide away from you and you usually don't see them unless they fly or something like that. Um, Monica says, crossfire worked great for the bait bugs. My children's uh, new apartment was infested and they've gotten them almost under all under control. Worked better than what the landlord had bought at some pest store. Yeah. Landlords don't know what they're doing. They just try. The thing about the landlord, so the law is, is that you can treat your own apartment. So you can do your own stuff as much as you want. If for free, it's not, you know, you, you do your own stuff. You don't have to worry about being licensed to treat your own house or treat your own apartment. But a landlord can't do that. They're not allowed to do that. Legally, they cannot treat your apartment. Now, they could provide you with pesticide. You could do it yourself but they cannot actually treat your apartment because then they can, the, the state will see them as applying pesticide for hire for, for a profit because you are paying them to live there. So this is a service you're receiving for living in their apartment. So the state will sue them and they will find them and they will win because it's the, against the law for them to do it. So they'll just buy you some cheap pesticide and say, here, just spray this, this is fine, but that's actually not the best thing to do. Um, it's, it's usually better just to find somebody or call, or ask me, I'm here. I mean, it, it, I wasn't always here before. I wasn't always a resource before, but I, I allow myself to be here. If you have any questions, I got tons of videos. Ask me, I see every comment. I delete over half of them because most of them are crazy trolls. But, you know, I'm always here to answer any questions you got. Um, thank you, Gabrielle. No Joke says, so I spray Crossfire in my children's bedroom as well as throughout the house, their beds are on the floor, no box springs, bed frames, just a mattress on the floor. What do you think of the effectiveness in the bedroom? We weren't seeing bugs or poop, but my son is getting bit. So that, that'll that work. You can treat, I do that all the time, no jokes. The, the, um, the way I treat it is I treat it as a platform bed. So, because uh, you, you have to treat the bed. The problem is you have to treat the bed. So, uh, and the bed frame, and, the, and because you don't have a bed frame, you need to treat the area underneath where the mattress lays on the floor because it, you treat it as if it were an elevated platform bed because that's technically that's what the floor is the floor is the bed itself that the mattress is laying on you don't treat the floor throughout the entire room you just spot treat that one area underneath the mattress you want to kind of fan spray that area so that when the mattress lays on top of it any bed bugs that squeeze between the two surfaces will die so you do need to do that and that'll up your chances of success with a um with a, like I said, with a platform bed. If it were a platform bed, you have to treat the whole platform too, that the mattress and box springs sit on top of. There's just too many ways in and out of the mattress and it's too easy to miss a spot. That's why you wanna make sure you get underneath the mattress. Um, Chaos says, did you see my question about if you've ever had to treat an RV for bed bugs? I've never had to treat an RV. I did see your question. 
I have actually never had to treat an RV. Have I ever had to treat an RV for bed bugs? No, you've treated RVs before. I've treated RVs for like mice. It's real common for them to get mice and stuff in them, but I don't think I've ever. And, and ants. Ants love RVs, but I've never had to do one for bed is, bugs. The RV is typically you, you go camping in an RV and you're not really bringing anything. Right. Back. If you're going camping, you're not going to a hotel. But I guess if you were to bring bed bugs from your home and you, you would infest your home, um, you know, not, not necessarily that, but it's more like a secondary infection. So you already have your home is infested with bed bugs. And then you take and you transport them from there to your RV. You could have them there in your RV. That's a possibility. But you'd still treat it the same as you would a home or a trailer. Uh, I have done a lot of trailers, you know, you like double wides and single wide trailers for bed bugs. Um, and they're built basically the same way as a travel trailer. They're just larger. So I would do probably the same thing. Um, did you see my question? Okay, I got that one. Gary, still haven't seen anything that doesn't have... A head or a footboard do you think they can climb up the metal legs to get into to me and would they go well so you need to treat the frame Gary so that includes the legs that touch the floor so they can't travel because they will travel up the metal legs uh, Jason I'm curious what you would do if crossfire stopped working huh okay so I've, I've been through this a lot of times cat so um cat asked if what I would do if crossfire stopped working I would switch to something that would. That's all you have to do. Um, yeah, I've had people tell me that they've used the whole gallon of Crossfire in one room. That's just over... That's absolutely gross use of pesticide. There's no reason to use that much pesticide. No reason whatsoever. Um, because you don't need that much. You really don't. You treat, you treat your mattress. You treat your box spring. You treat your bed frame. The headboard, the footboard, and the bed rails, but you only treat the cracks. You don't treat, you don't fan spray at all. You just treat the cracks. Uh, you treat around your baseboards and your crown molding. And what have you got? I mean, you've got a whole lot left out of a gallon. You know, a 13 ounce bottle mixes an entire gallon of pesticide. You should still have most of what you mixed. You, you really should have most of it after one bedroom. No joke says, so I spray crossfire in my children's bedroom as well throughout the house. Okay, I already saw that question. Um. Other than bed bugs, what pests do you eliminate most often? Well, bed bugs are not what I eliminate most often. Uh, bed bugs don't even amount to a third of my income. They are actually pretty low as to what I actually deal with on a whole. Mostly, I deal with general pest control, and general pest control covers things like uh, rodents, mice and rats, um, ants, fleas, cockroaches, silverfish, uh, centipedes, millipedes, crickets, um, you know, spiders, any kind of bugs and stuff that get in the house, it general pest control is the majority of the work that I do. And that covers lots of bugs, you know. But as far as the complaint calls, it depends on the time of year and the time of day. I'm 24 hours. I did a bat job a few, a few weeks ago where I had to go out in the middle of the night, catch a bat, and release it outside. Um, I've done snakes in the middle of the night. I've done uh, animals, lots of animals. I actually drove out one time, uh, me and the kids, we drove out in the middle of the night to a house out uh, maybe about 45 minutes away because the lady had caught, captured a copperhead underneath the hood of her car. And so I had to go do that in the middle of the night, take care of that. I've had to go out and pick up a boa constrictor that a guy had loose in his house. Um, but as far as like really common, I'm getting a lot of roach calls now. I, I hadn't done a lot of roaches in several years. That's another thing that's come up. Uh, that I deal with a lot. Uh, ants. Ants are probably ants and fleas. Fleas in the, in the summer, late summer. Ants in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. Ants all the time. Spiders all the time. So typically the things that I probably get calls most on are ants and spiders. Maybe mice. That'd be like maybe a close third would be mice. So because I live out in the country, you know, when you deal out in the country, you deal with a lot of field mice coming in whenever people mow the grass and stuff. You get a lot of mouse calls. Um, no joke says we use a mattress protector as well as heavy sheets on the bed to bugs come. So if you're going to treat with crossfire, you don't want to use a mattress protector uh, or a mattress encasement. The mattress protector is fine. If it's just like one of those things for like a pee pad or something, then that's fine. You can use that. But you don't want to use a total complete mattress encasement because it kind of defeats the purpose of using crossfire. Because the crossfire, you want the bugs to crawl up over the chemical and die. And they can't crawl up over the chemical and die if it's been covered up with a mattress encasement. 
uh, Gabby Rose, where do you buy Crossfire and how do you mix it with water? So I've got Gabby, the, um, if you go to, um, let me see, slash, 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 sorry I talked to myself. Let's see if I can just get the link this way. There we go. That's easier. So if you go there, I have a link to Crossfire on that page. Just go to Bed Bug Control and it'll show you where to look. Molly says, I started using that ant spray you recommended. Um, Alpine WSG is what I recommended. I had some ants come in this morning, but I only started spraying last night. Do I spray every day? No, you don't. So, all right. This is one of the complaints I get every time I use Alpine. So Alpine is a really good chemical for ants. It works really, really good on ants. But the problem is, is it is a non-repellent pesticide. So the ants can still crawl through it. They do not see it. So the reason I use Alpine WSG for ant control on the inside is because it's fairly safe to use around like children and pets and you can use it in kitchens and places like that. And so I like to use it inside, but then outside I usually use something like Demon or uh, Tau Star or something like that that's a highly repellent pesticide to kind of push the ants away from the house. And if you, you push them away from the house um, for whatever you do around the outside, just in case you've got ants coming in from outside. But if they're living inside and you continue to see ants inside, I always tell my customers to give it at least two weeks. If you still see ants after two weeks, then call me and I'll come back for a second visit. But typically I don't have to. It does take about two weeks for them to all kind of get into the chemical and die off. So give it at least a couple weeks before you worry about treating it again, Molly. Um, but no, bed bugs are not the highest. I talk about them a lot because everybody wants to hear about them, but they're not the highest cat. Uh, sorry if you've answered these questions a lot already. New follower, but I, oh, no, I, I answer the same questions over and over. I understand. There's always new people here. Bed bug traps do not work, Tony. Um, the only bed bug trap that works is, so, so what you do is you go through your house and you treat your house with crossfire and you treat your bed with crossfire, especially your bed. And then you lay in your bed that night. You let it dry, you make your bed, and you sleep on it that night. Now you have created a bed bug trap because you are the bait. So you're a trap, like an old uh, Looney Tunes cartoon where bed Bugs Bunny is you know Elmer Fudd's trying to catch Bugs Bunny, so he's got the little stick sitting up there, and he's got the little box, he's got a carrot underneath the box, and he's got a little string there. So the carrot is the bait. Okay, so you are the carrot. So so you're a carrot. I'm not trying to be offensive or anything. You might if you don't want to be a carrot, you'll have to be a carrot. You be something else. But we're going to use this as a, as an example. So you're a carrot under the box. So when the bed bugs crawl up through the crossfire because they don't see it as a pesticide, uh, they crawl through the chemical to try to get to the carrot, which is you, and they die. So where Bugs Bunny goes, hoo, 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 and bounces all around and wins the day, because, you know, he's Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny, uh, they don't have that kind of luck. Bed bugs don't have that kind of luck. They just die. So that's a horrible joke. I understand. It was really cringe to watch people go, hoo, 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 like Bugs Bunny, but that did it. All right, Samantha says, I know you aren't supposed to use Alpine on a mattress, but how close to the beds can you apply it? You can put Alpine on the box spring. You can't put it on the mattress, but you could treat the box spring with it. Um... I used to do alpine bed bug jobs uh, when the bed bugs weren't present on the mattress. Uh, you could treat the, the box springs with it and absolutely eliminate bed bugs. You used to be able to. Now, alpine doesn't work as good on bed bugs as it used to, but you could try and see how it works. But I would, uh, if it doesn't, you, you'll want to look into moving on to something different because I have noticed lately on some of the jobs I've done um, that the alpine isn't killing them like it should. Kat says, Jason, will you try and link a more budget-friendly sprayer on your Amazon store? I am working. I am working to it. I, I have tried. I've actually purchased a couple of these plastic sprayers. Uh, we've got one. It's out in my shed right now uh, that I've tried to use. The problem is, is that they clog so easily that I, mean, I don't feel like you would be able to do a complete bed bug job with just one sprayer. That's the problem because they clog up so quick and the crossfire is really thick so even when you mix it with water if you don't mix it right 
even if you mix it right, you can still have like separation and little gunky bits get over into your sprayer. And those plastic sprayers, they're just not made very well to be able to withstand a lot of pesticide like that in them. The way I explain it to people is you've got a high quality pesticide. It's a very high quality pesticide that you're expecting a very low quality piece of equipment to be able to apply. Now I had a guy come on here and talk about that just a few days ago. He came on and talked about how you could use a Walmart cheap $8 Walmart sprayer and use Crossfire with that and that probably would work and it probably would. But if you, you got to look at if it clogs and, and how often you're having to stop and take it apart and clean it and fix it and put it back together and go again and then for it to clog again within five minutes, that's the issue with those plastic sprayers is they clog a lot. Um, you want to go with something more high pressure. The reason you want the high pressure system is because not, not necessarily high pressure, but at least up to like, you know, maybe 50 to 60 PSI, maybe up to 80 PSI. The reason why you want that is because as it forces the chemical through the screens and the filters, it actually breaks it up and mixes it as it's being applied as well. So that, that's why I like to use a more like a BNG or something like that because it's it's got screens in it and stuff that catch the trash and debris and keep it from clogging up on your on the end of your, your tip. Um, Molly said, but I will. I will do a video on tanks. I really need to do one. I had a move, we, we closed on a house back in July, and we've had a whole lot of remodeling done to the house. I've got a, a lot more to be done. The guy, my wife's already done bought a bathtub and a toilet, so she's wanting to redo one of the bathrooms upstairs. And so I don't know when I'm gonna get a chance to do one of these videos, because it kind of requires a place to kind of set things up to explain how things work. Um, but I am gonna do a video on the actual spray pumps and the differences and why you want to use one over another and why you may want to invest in something a little more high quality for your pesticide application. And this and, and it's not something that you would have to use for crossfire. Once you get rid of your bed bugs, you can always switch over to a different chemical and use it for ants or, you know, uh, beetles or spiders or whatever around the outside. If you have a full tank of uh, with a BNG and on a jet stream, you can spray up as far as th almost three stories up to kill a wasp nest in the eave of your house and everything. They're really convenient for that. Um, hello, I'm new here or anywhere with pests. Is it true bed bugs have to? And then I missed the rest of your question. Uh, no joke says we have a pretty decent sized house. I use a whole gallon of Crossfire in the house. And I feel like I was a little short on the last room. Do you think I used too much? Oh, you probably used enough. What's your square footage? Because I've done a 5,000 square foot house before with one tank. And had some left over at the end of the job. I did use almost the whole tank though. But, um, Kathy says, I've got the crossfire tank. I'm ready for war. Because I'm sick and tired of getting bit. Alright. Uh, afraid to go to bed at night do I first begin with spraying cracks and crevices in the walls the box springs of the bed so where where I do how I do a bed bug job is I typically go in and take and start in the bedroom I like to start at ground zero and work my way towards the living room um, I feel like I just like to go in and kill the, the majority of the problem that's just what I like to do and I think the customer likes to see that I think they like to see me you know not skip around and just go straight to where the problem's been bothering them so I go right to the bedroom, I flip the beds up, and I start treating the beds. I usually treat, uh, take the mattress off, I usually slide it between the door frames so it stands up, so I don't have to worry about, you know, somebody being there to stand up and hold the mattress. And then I pull the, the box springs up off the bed frame. I treat the bed frame and the baseboards up behind the bed, because you can't get those usually unless you pull all that stuff apart. And then uh, I treat inside the box spring, I treat the box spring itself, I lay them back down, I treat the mattress while it's still standing up on one side, put it back down, treat the whole rest of the mattress, and put it all back together. And so that way the bed's back together by the time I'm done, and then you, you move on, you, you treat the baseboards and the crown molding and around the closet, hinges and stuff in that room, and then you move to the next room and you, you rinse and repeat until you get to the front of the house where then you start taking apart the couch, and uh, you know if you have to, you know any kind of den in the basement or furniture in the basement, go down there, get all that done. And I just slowly work my way back out to the front door and then I leave. So that's the way I usually do a house. Uh, all furniture. 
Okay, so with the help, God says, hello, I'm new here. Is it true that bed bugs have to be done by expert or will it won't be effective? No, I, I mean, I, you look at my channel. Is there anybody in this room right now? There are 21 people here looking at my chat. 21 people in chat. How many people here have been killing their bed bugs alone without the help of an exterminator? If there's anyone in the chat, say, I've been able to do it myself, please. Because uh, that's the way a salesman tries to uh, sell you something that you don't need is they try to tell you that uh, you, you can't do it on your own, that it's impossible for you to kill your own bed bug problem. I get calls every day, all the time. Uh, I, get, I get calls, I get letters. People send me letters in my post office box from all over the world. I get uh, emails, I get, um, I get comments on my videos talking about, thank God I found you, it's about time I found you because you, you can help me. You, you've helped me get rid of my bed bug problem and I can sleep on my own. Gary, he got rid of his problem. He hasn't been bitten over two weeks. Um, you know, and maybe maybe he didn't get rid of them, but they're on the way out the door anyway. He's, you know, it, people are able to get rid of their bed bugs. It's not impossible for it to happen. You can get rid of your bed bugs without the help of an exterminator, without spending thousands of dollars. You know, I've, I have people that call me local. I had a lady call me today. Uh, she called me today, and she wanted a bed bug job, and I told her the price. And she's like, that's really expensive. And I said, yeah, I know. I said, but um, I said, if, if the price is a problem, I said, you can go onto my YouTube channel. You can watch. I've got over 100 videos on bed bugs alone. You can go and you can watch my YouTube. You can get all the advice you need. I've got all the chemicals you need right there provided free. It's all free. It's easy to find. And watch it. If you think you can handle it, you can try that or call me back and I'll work something out. I try to work with everyone's budget. And that's what I told her. And she said, oh, well, if you, you can do it yourself. She's like, I didn't know I could buy the chemicals myself. I thought you had to be licensed to buy them. And I'm like, no. And this lady lives like five minutes down the road. She's literally five minutes down the road from my house. And I could have sold her a bed bug job, and I didn't. I said, no, that, no, you don't have to have an exterminator. You can do it yourself. If you really can't afford it, then you really can't afford it. And then you could try maybe doing it yourself. So that's the way I am. It's not about making money. I can bronze. Um, uh, and yes, my live stro my live streams are uploaded always. They're saved on the channel always. Um, but yeah, I, I do have an exterminator. Oh no, I don't have a bed bug exterminator though. Not in Maryland. I have a guy that does extermination up there for like general pest control that I can refer out, but I don't, I don't know anybody that does bed bugs in Maryland. And it's really only Southern Maryland because they cover Southern Maryland into Richmond, Virginia. So about a two hours away, I guess, is, is how far they're willing to drive. I don't know if they do most of Maryland or if they just do Northern Virginia, but I think they spend most of their time in Northern Virginia. Yeah, 900 square feet. You should not have used an entire gallon in 900 square feet. Yeah, they could use a bit a little bit too much. Um, so there's a lot of people here just saying, I did it myself, I did it myself, I did it myself. We did it ourselves, thank you. So it is possible to do it yourself. Um, no, it's not. Harris Routine, with the help of God, ask if Harris Routine is good uh, from Ace Hardware. No, it's not. It doesn't work. Um, Kat T says, happy to hear your testimonials. Hopefully, I'll be able to say the same soon. Um, let's see. Harris Gold Label is the same as Crossfire. But the problem with Harris Gold Label is... this. Now, this is one of the issues. So, I have had a couple of people get back to me. So, this is something that is, is a newer chemical. Harris Gold Label is new. It's, uh, it's only been out for maybe a couple years because the MGK, company MGK, has allowed them to produce Crossfire in a jug. So basically, it's pre-mixed a gallon of Crossfire ready to go. You don't have to buy the concentrate. You don't have to buy, buy the sprayer. It's all together in one piece, which sounds great. But what I think happens, I don't think the chemical stays mixed very well. I don't think it, I don't think it uh, lasts like it does when you have a concentrate mixed right there in person. 
Um, chemical starts to deteriorate as soon as you add it to water. So you need to understand that that's why chemical has a shelf life. So it'll tell you on the label of Crossfire, it says right there on the label, do not use this pesticide after 24 hours. So you can mix it the night before a job and do it like that morning, but you don't want to save it more than two days in a row because it goes bad. All right, so Crossfire or Paris Gold Label um, is already mixed, and then they ship it out from their from their distribution center, and it sits on a shelf for how long? You know, that's the point. And so I don't necessarily believe it's going to be as effective as Crossfire mixing yourself, but that doesn't mean it won't work. You can shake it up really good. You could probably get it to work. Um, you know, but that's the only thing I would buy over the counter. Otherwise, I would buy a Crossfire over Amazon, and I would treat that way. I have bought Crossfire online on Amazon.com and used it to kill people's bed bugs. That's what I prefer to do, is order it, mix it, and use it. Um, so Monica says, I did it myself. I followed your precise directions on your videos, and so you were able to get rid of them. Uh, this is our third week after treatment without any signs from bed bug, which is luck. Uh, Bronze Bella says, I've been spraying Crossfire for 28 days and I'm still being bit, uh, so I am doing something wrong. You may be reinfesting too, Brie. So, or Bella, Bella, Bronze, Bella, whatever your name is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to butcher that. But um, it may be that you're reinfesting. You may be bringing them in from your car. You may be missing a spot that you're not thinking about getting to. Um, there are other options. You, I mean, there are other, other problems. So if you live in an apartment, they may be coming from a neighboring apartment. That's a possibility too. Uh, Chaos Omen says, I saw on one of your videos that you need a pump sprayer to use the crossfire. Is there a cheaper alternative or is that the only thing that will work? Um, there's other tanks you could probably try. I don't have anything I can recommend. Uh, Green Channel says, what's good? On break at Lowe's right now. Figured I would catch a little bit of the show. Oh, everything's going all right. Nice to see you're here. I'm glad you made it. I just, I've, I've spent so much money at Lowe's over the last couple months. Well, I tell my wife, my <laughs> wife has spent so much money at Lowe's. Well, oh, so much money at Lowe's. But I got a credit card, so, you know, how that goes. Um, so a lot of encouragement from Molly to, to Kat. She can get rid of them. Um, Kathy says, I'm getting ready to go for it on my own, thanks to you. Thanks for your quick answers. You could do it, Kathy. I don't know. I don't know very many people that treat bed bugs in New York at all, Samantha. Um, but the thing about pesticides in New York, you can't get Crossfire in New York. I mean, you can. There are ways people said they've been able to get Crossfire in New York. Crossfire is outlawed in New York. You can't buy it as a citizen. You have to only buy it as a pest control. They'll ship it to you, but only if you are a licensed professional. They're the only people that can get it. But um, there are ways you can get it. If you were a member of my Discord, so my Discord, let me see. I'm going to actually link my Discord channel. Um, if I can figure out how to do it. How do I do it? I am so new to Discord. I'm looking. Invites. Oh, hi, Rory. Rory brought me some, some coffee. Thank you, Rory. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know how to get a link from Discord? I always have a problem getting a link from Discord. But that's what I recommend people use, because I have Discord. I think Kat's on Discord. Aren't you on Discord, Kat? I thought you were on Discord. How do you get a link to my Discord? <laughs> I'm such a noob, I'm telling you. I only have Discord because I play World of Warcraft and people make you have it. Now you know. So not only am I am I a bug killer, but I'm also the killer of of the of the evils of Azeroth. 
because I'm a nerd. I play with my kids too. Um, let's see. Is that it? Try that. That's an invite from me to my Discord channel. It's up to 100 people can click that link and it'll work. There you go. Hopefully that'll work. All right. So let's move on. Ah, I got that out of the way. By the way, I have no furniture. I have sprayed all the cracks and crevices and all the items. Now, now that's, that's one thing I don't recommend new van strips. I think new van strips are, are uh, so when I started my company, there's a lot of things that you can do um, that are harmful in pest, in pest control. Uh, harmful to you as a pest control operator and also harmful to your customers. And new van strips are toxic to human beings. They're toxic to pets. They're toxic uh, in general. They're not good. They, they produce a toxic vapor called uh, similar to Vapona, which was a, a chemical back in the 80s that people used to use to kill bugs. And it's a, it's, so when I go into a home and a customer asks me, you know, is this going to be harmful to my children? Is this going to be harmful to my pets? Is this going to be harmful to me? Um, I, like to, I like to be able to tell them, no, it doesn't create a toxic vapor. So that means that as the chemical evaporates, the smell that you smell that comes off the pesticide or whatever, it's not toxic doesn't make you sick okay vapona or new van strips do produce a toxic vapor so the air is actually permeated with a toxic substance that you cannot breathe because it will cause you problems so that's why I don't like to use new van strips I don't like to recommend them they do kill bed bugs they do kill bugs um, kind of like the same idea behind mothballs but they're much more toxic than mothballs, and I just don't think they're safe to use. Um, Azaz says, I hired someone to do a treatment for me. He said the chemical will last for 12 weeks. Is that possible? So 12 weeks is how many days is 12 weeks? 7 times 12. I'm horrible with math. That's about 90 days. Is that about 90 days? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 90 days is about right. So most pesticide will last 90 days. Um... Crossfire lasts 30 days. I don't know what he used, what pesticide he used, but I know Crossfire says directly on the label it only lasts for 30 days. It took Molly two months to get rid of her bed bugs. So it can take longer than one treatment. You can, you might have to treat twice. How would you treat electronics, books, knickknacks that may be close to the bed? I don't treat those things. Um, I try to convince the customer to kind of move them a little away, maybe a foot away from the bed. Don't have them touching the bed. Don't leave any kind of extra mode of transportation in and out of the bed for the bed bug. But um, I generally don't make the customer do anything because I figure they're going to crawl out of that stuff and bite you anyway. When they do, they're going to die. It's really important to treat your bed it's really, really, really important to treat your bed, um, treat your mattress, treat your box spring, treat your head, headboard, footboard, and bed rails. It's very, very, very important to treat your bed very thoroughly because that's where the bed bugs are going to want to be. That's where they're going to come to bite you when you're laying in the bed. Now, if they're in your knickknacks and your belongings around outside your bed, your books and stuff like that, if they're in that stuff, there's a likeliness that they, they won't die. But the problem is, is that there's still 30 days that they have to wait and sit there and not eat. And they're not going to go 30 days and starve for 30 days. They're going to come out and try to get to you and bite you. And the fact that Crossfire isn't seen as a pesticide, they don't see it there. They're going to crawl out, crawl through the chemical, and they're going to die. So that's, that's what happens. So there's no reason to take everything out 
and uh, you know unload all of your furniture and unload all of your belongings and try to cram them into like a U-Haul. I've seen these people that have gone around here recently that have started providing U-Haul services. So what they'll do is they'll go and rent a U-Haul and then they'll take and heat up the U-Haul with a heat treatment machine in the back of the U-Haul and they'll take all your stuff and sit it back there and do a heat treatment on your stuff. And I just don't think that's that's necessary in, in any aspect. And I think that's really dangerous for the next person that rents that U-Haul that's going to be full of bed bugs. So it's just not, yeah, there's no reason that you would have to treat any of your belongings or anything like that. Because if you use the right chemical, the bed bugs are going to naturally die as they crawl out to get to you anyway. It's like I was explaining earlier to one of the, the chatters here, um, is that you're, you're basically like the old Looney Tunes cartoon where Elmer Fudd puts the carrot underneath the box, you're the carrot, and the crossfire is the trap. And so as long as the bed bug tries to cross over that line to get to you, the carrot, the trap kills the bed bug. So the bed bug does die. And they'll come to you too. I'll tell you what. I had a complaint about a year ago. I did a bed bug job in the inner city of Lynchburg. It was a pretty infested house. And actually, I believe a ground zero was a sofa bed. So the sofa bed was really, really infested. The bed bugs were all over the house, but the sofa bed was absolutely infested. There were millions on the sofa bed. There were so many, so many bed bugs. But the girl's boyfriend was coming and sleeping on the sofa bed. And I think he was bringing them from his house and laying in that sofa bed and just kept reinfesting that sofa bed over and over and over. And so I, I treated it. And the next month when I came back, the second visit, so this is back when I was still doing three visits. This is a couple of years ago. I came back to do the, uh, the, the second visit of the bed bug job. And he said, I don't know what you sprayed on that bed, but whatever you treated that bed with for like a week and a half, they ate me like I was the best dessert ever. It was horrible. But then they stopped. They didn't bite him anymore after that. But they went absolutely crazy trying to get to him to bite him. Even, but the bed had been treated, and they all died. So when I opened the bed the next month, there were thousands of those things dead everywhere, all over the floor. So, like, if you've never opened a sofa bed before, you open it up, and you can actually flip the mattress up from the, the push cushions of the couch. You flip that mattress backwards, and you can see under the couch all the way to the carpet, typically through the metal frame and stuff. You can see the carpet. And they're just dead bed bugs all up underneath it, all up on the carpet and everything. Because they don't pull the sofa bed out. Those things are heavy. So, uh, Gary says, I'm glad to hear you say they're not going to wait to feed. I was wondering the same thing. All right, Monica said, so you have to do a second application of Crossfire no more than 14 days after the first application because the eggs hatch around that time. No. So, yeah, you can do it that way. So, Monica, if you want to treat up to two weeks after the initial treatment, you can. It's just going to make your chemical application stronger. But the chemical will still be effective. It just won't kill them as quickly. So, what happens is, is Monica is saying she, the way she got rid of her bed bugs was she waited 14 days after her initial treatment, treated again, did the same treatment again as like a booster treatment to try to kill anything that might be hatching out brand new to try to kill them quicker so they wouldn't bite her as bad. And that does work. That does work. Um, but it's not necessary. You don't have to do that, but you can do that. Cat, if you saw the houses I went in, you would know I don't require people to clean their house. <laughs> oh, some of the pictures. Oh, some of the pictures I could show. Oh, my goodness. But I won't. I have them from my database. It's, it's in my database for the the patient files and stuff, but no, nah, I don't make people clean. And I think, honestly, I'll say, with the help of God, says, why are they meaner sometimes more than other times? I don't know. It might just be because there were just so many of them, but it does affect the insect's nervous system, and typically what I learned years ago when I got my license, I mean, years and years ago, over 20 years ago, um, is that insects die from the chemical that kills them, it's a it's a nervous reaction. So so things that cause nervous nervous reactions, um, like if you if you have a nervous reaction to like a pesticide or something like that, typically what will happen is you might get an upset stomach, you might shake, you might have tremors, you might start to sweat profusely, 
Uh, you might have weird like watering or tingling of the tongue or tingling of the fingertips and stuff because it's all nervous system problems uh, is what is what's caused. And so if a bed bug is suffering from similar issues because they're dying from nervous system failure, then they may go do some pretty crazy things as they come out to try to get to you. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with, with Monica. She says, I would suggest you do a clean before the mop and only once before you treat. That's, that's correct. You only want to mop before you, before you treat. And then you don't want to really mop at all until after you know all the bed bugs are dead because you want to make sure the pesticide is still available to them to crawl through. That's, a good, that's good advice. That's actually really good advice. So I don't make people clean before I do the work, but it's nice when they do. And two, I'll mention this. If you got a bunch of crap under your bed and you hire an exterminator, an exterminator won't spray your bed because the drift and the drip, drips and stuff down onto your stuff, you can't, you can't treat it that way, not legally. So you would need to move the stuff out from underneath your bed. You don't want to treat your bed and then have the runoff and drips and spray, overspray and stuff spraying down on your belongings underneath your bed. So that would be a good idea to take the stuff out from underneath your bed. I do usually tell my customers to take things out from under the bed because you don't want to spray down on, on people's belongings. So, but it's reaching that time. It's been about an hour since I've been here. Uh, if you have any last minute questions, go ahead and, and ask me now because I'm going to go ahead and get off here and get some sleep. I've got a long trip tomorrow. Uh, got to drive all the way to Northern Virginia tomorrow. Apartment building that has bed bugs. Should I treat my apartment with crossfire as a preventative measure? You can. You absolutely can. Linda. Linda asks about treating her apartment, and uh, before she moves in, yes. Uh, in fact, that's a good idea to treat it not just for bed bugs, but for roaches and stuff like that too, because you don't know what the people had before you move in. You know, if it's a brand new apartment and you're the first tenant, well, then you're the only person. But if uh, you know, if someone else has lived there before you, you don't really know what they have. It's nothing wrong at all about going in and spraying. I would check your lease, make sure it's not going to, you know, uh, break your lease. There are some landlords that will not allow you to do your own pest control in your apartment. And so uh, that may be a possibility. So you want to make sure you're not going to break anything in your lease. That's, that's all I would warn you about. I actually did have a property manager yell at me one time because a guy called me in the middle of the night because he had already had two exterminators cleared his apartment. And I went out there, got there at 1230. It's pouring down rain in Charlottesville. And I couldn't even find his apartment. He had to come down on the, on the side of the road, meet me on the side of the road, and we drove up to his apartment, the two of us, and uh, were three of us, me and him and my son, Rory, rode with me that night and uh, to find his house. And then uh, within the first 10 minutes, Rory found the bed bugs live in the bed. And two other exterminators had already come in and cleared the apartment. And here it was. My son was only 12 years old and said, nah, that's a bed bug right there. And sure enough, that's what it was. He found them right away. So, but yeah, uh, property managers, I don't care for very much. <laughs> uh, Molly says, can you use multiple treatments for different pests? Can answer next week. Can you use multiple treatments for different pests? Well, I mean, if you're, I'm not exactly sure what the question is. Um, can you use multiple treatments? As far as multiple pesticides for different pests, you can. You don't want to mix Crossfire with anything. You don't want anything to come into contact with Crossfire. So you want to get rid of your bed bugs first, and then you can treat with something different, like for ants or, or crickets or spiders or whatever. You use a different chemical, but Crossfire is only for bed bugs. It's not allowed to be used for anything but bed bugs. But you can use Crossfire. So I treat. I have a lot of rental houses, and I do schools, and the schools and the rentals I do on a preventative for bed bugs. So I'll go through and I'll at least hit the box springs on all the beds and take care of that stuff. And I also go through and treat the baseboards and stuff like that just to make sure that people don't become infested with roaches and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you could do preventative. I recommend it, especially schools and stuff. But y'all have a great night. I appreciate it, and I will see you, I guess, next week. I'll look forward to a new video on Tuesday. I've already got the video. I just haven't 
I haven't edited it yet. I, I drag my feet a lot on editing my videos. It's a lot. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Bye.